Steve Nicol and Shaq Hislop. A long list of guests. Hercules Gomez, Taylor Twelman. Uh, uh, we have Sid Lowe. We have Julian Laurent. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Have I forgotten anyone? I think, I, I think that's it. Think... Now, uh, Adrian, I think tonight they were always the favourite, even, even away from home. And the fact that Philippe Cocu and Derby rotated their team and put quite a lot of youngsters on the pitch, he made it even easier for United where Solskjaer put a very strong side uh, for the game tonight. So it's a good momentum for them. It's a good, a lot of confidence going into the derby on Sunday against, against Man City. And I think that's what Solskjaer was looking for tonight, more than going through and, and facing Norwich away in the, in the next round. It was more preparing as much as possible for the derby on Sunday. Mm. Yeah, the critics say, well, it's only Derby County, Steve. Mm. You can only beat who's in front of you, and that was pretty comprehensive. Well, I would, I would suggest that you can say it's only Derby County, but Manchester United, away from home, mm. have been very poor. Mm. You know, I've, I'm now thinking on United as a team at home mm. that can give anybody a game, but when they go away from home against teams that they should beat... They've struggled. So the fact that this was comfortable, I know Ollie said that he had a couple of moments that he wasn't happy, mm. but I thought this was a comfortable victory. Mm. And listen, United, if nothing else, have to start going away from home and actually feeling as though they can win mm. or at least get a result. For, for all the criticism that Manchester United has come in for, this is a good run for them. This mm. is now nine and undefeated. Yeah. And, and, and you're right, you can only beat who's put in front of you. And Derby made four changes from the team uh, that won away to Sheffield Wednesday on the weekend. But that's not Manchester United's concern, especially with, with games to come, the Manchester Derby on the weekend. It's about getting um, results, if, even if the performances aren't that great. And listen, I understand, you know, Steve's right. Manchester United at Old Trafford certainly better on the road, but they're putting together a decent little run, including beating Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, a couple of draws in, in, in the way. Given the criticism that they've, that they've endured, this is... Mm. A fantastic turn for United. Well, you talk about United having to get it done away from Old Trafford. They'll be away again in the quarterfinals. This is the final uh, lineup. All these games available, remember, on ESPN Plus the weekend of March 21st. Arsenal against Sheffield United. City at Newcastle. United at Norwich. Chelsea at Leicester City. Interesting draw, wasn't it? Kept all the potential big boys apart. City are the firm favourites, according to the bookmakers, 8-11, to 11, despite having to go to Shankers, Newcastle. Chelsea, 8-1. Uh, to one. Arsenal, 9-1, to one, as are Manchester United. Uh, Jules, what do you make of those odds to win the FA Cup? I think they're fair. I think Man City, for all their brilliance in the domestic cups since Pep Guardiola took over, have to be the favourite of the whole of the whole competition, they just won the League Cup. Uh, they won what, three in a row. They obviously the, the the FA Cup holders as well after destroying Watford last season in the in the, in the final. And I think with the league gone now, uh, they will focus on the FA Cup and the um, and the Champions League. And I think they have enough depth in their squads to mm. to play two very strong teams in either competitions and go really far in both. Can anyone stop Manchester City? And if so, who? No, Who's best to quit? <laughs> well, yeah, well, um, no one yeah. should stop Manchester City. Yeah? I mm. think, listen, if Pep Guardiola decides, decides to use his best team and, mm. and they play anything like we know that they can, Manchester City should win the, this tournament. Mm. But we all know that City have bigger fish to fry. Their eye is, is firmly fixed on, on the Champions League. So who knows how that plays out in terms of Pep Guardiola and whether he decides to rotate a squad, who he uses, who he doesn't. The others in, in, in that hat, including Manchester United, who've had a decent head-to-head -head with, with City uh, mm. of late, um, this is their best chance of silverware. Mm. And, and so you expect all their eggs to, to be in that one basket, certainly in terms of lifting any kind of trophy. Mm. I was a little surprised to see Arsenal up there. Mm. I mean, I guess, I guess you'd have to think the bookies are thinking about them getting knocked out of the Europa League. Mm. But mm. I actually don't think Arsenal's problems are the legs. Mm. I don't think it's been able to run around. They're just not good enough, in my opinion. I think they've got too many individuals that make mistakes. So mm. I was a little surprised to see them so high. Mm. Uh, as always, uh, extra time. Because if he doesn't do that, then all of these shows he's doing, but if he doesn't score 17, 18, 19 goals, quite honestly, it's not going to be good enough. Herc, quickly. 
I don't think he'll score 17, 18, 19, 20 goals. I don't think he's going to be that type of player for him. Speaking of Guillermo Barros Caloro, he says he's going to be a better player for the team. Defensively, the structure is going to be better. I agree with what you're saying. They can't play, play direct to him, but I don't mind the crossing. If you look at the type of goal scorer he's been throughout the decade, the majority of his goals are one-time finishes and crosses into the box. It's about being better for him. I almost feel this Galaxy team is better suited as a 7v7 team than really an 11v11. Now, a couple of sizzling goals I want to highlight from the weekend. And, and, and the reaction to them from one Josie Altidore. We'll start with Max Arroyo. Oh, he can tell you how difficult it is, the preparation. I thought he did an awfully good job of doing it. And the shade, just a tremendous amount of penniness and shade for me is unbelievably brilliant. Because since the departure of Slotan, this league is lacking personality. It's lacking color. I hope Josie Altidore brings more of that. There is history with Montreal. They eliminated Toronto FC in 2015. Then Toronto FC eliminated him in that unbelievable two legged affair uh, in 2016 so I understand where he's coming from I want more of this from Josie mm. what do you reckon Taylor Aid Herc it's just a sign to me that in the 25th year the first week of the MLS regular season had some real power behind it when you look mm. at what we did look at our Deportes numbers were massive you look at our numbers on ESPN 1 Aid you had the double header in, in uh, Seattle for Chicago uh, the numbers we did online, the amount of Sports Center hits we did, it just goes to show you that the 25th year, how all, we, we've talked about it a long time about being the sport for the future. The fact that Josie's on TSN uh, throwing shade or whatever it is, the fact that he's hosting Sports Center in Canada and, and doing that just shows you where the uh, power of week one in MLS really was. Yeah, really noticeable, wasn't it? Uh, as is the CONCACAF Champions League, gentlemen. Let's switch to that. Everyone was looking forward to the uh, Club America Atlanta United tilt. They still are, but it's got a little bit of a, a different flavor to it as you see the full quarterfinal lineup, including you. This was Atlanta United, but it's Atlanta United with Joseph Martinez. He's such a big part of this team. He's a big part of this league. I don't think there's a more lethal goal scorer in this league or that I've seen in a while than Joseph Martinez. He's that type of player, and without Joseph Martinez, their CONCACAF uh, chances go down the drain, and so do their league chances. Taylor, finally, want to push it forward to this weekend. You talked about what a big week one it was. Week two, and your game, particularly Portland against mm -hmm. Nashville, not the start that either side wanted in week one. What are you, what are you looking for in week two? No, but I don't think many of us uh, on the inside and even on the outside of Major League Soccer expected a lot from Nashville at home against Atlanta. But the Portland Timbers have been shocking to me. You look at their last 10 games at Providence Park, they've only won three of those. And, and both of you gentlemen know this better than anyone, right? The fact is, it was very difficult to win games in Portland. Now, all of a sudden, they've completely lost their mojo. Now, listen, they outplayed Minnesota at home in week one in the first 20, 25 minutes. Doesn't matter. You lose the game at home. And so now, all of a sudden, Giovanni Savarese has got to answer questions. Can he push the right buttons? They've got some injuries, so that depth is being tested. Uh, but the end of last season, I felt like they were going to make a run with all those home games in a row. They didn't use that. And you kick off the opening game of 2020 with the loss. This is as close to a must-win game at home for the Portland Timbers because of the psyche and what's going on in that group. I actually think we got ourselves a good one because Nashville is going to take about 17 buses up to <laughs> Portland and put it right in front of goal about 25 yards out. And we've all seen that Diego Valeri and the Portland Timbers struggle in those moments. Because it's such a manageable road trip as well for those uh, Nashville fans. Yeah. There'll, be a <laughs> there'll be a lot of eyeballs on that Sunday night game. Uh, looking forward to it very much. Herc and Taylor, thanks for your time. Portland and Nashville, 7 o'clock Eastern. Just to remind you, Sunday night, uh, prime time on ESPN. And uh, Taylor has been busy. He has a brand new show, which you can see every Wednesday. Wednesday, 2 o'clock Eastern. It's banter with Taylor Twelman. He covers the entire spectrum. So 2-1 on the night. Not enough for Granada. Athletic Bilbao through, even though it was 2-2 uh, on aggregate. The away goal doing it. Real Sociedad, of course, had won the previous night against Miranda's the final and all Basque affair on ESPN plus April the 17th the day to Real Sociedad against Athletic Bilbao that should really be something special let's uh, bring Sid Lowe into the show and Sid a little secret I think you were supposed to be at that Granada game tonight weren't you what, what happened yeah I missed the train to get there <laughs> so I jumped in a taxi and went dashing to the bus station and missed the bus to get there as well so so didn't make it sadly uh, I was supposed to be at both of those Copa del Rey semi-finals. I was only at the one in, in Miranda del Ebro last night. Wasn't at the one tonight. I'll be at the final, though, and I think this is going to be so, 
so special. It's, it's very difficult, genuinely it's difficult, to do justice to just how different Basque football is to the rest of Spain, to just how um, deeply rooted in their, in their traditions, in their history these two clubs are, how huge this game is going to be. The Basque derby is one of the best games of the season, every season, and now it's in the Copa del Rey final. They've never played, played each other in a Copa del Rey final. These are two clubs in Real Sociedad's case. It's 32 years since they're in a final. These are two clubs who won four league titles in a row between them at the beginning of the 80s, but haven't won anything since then. This will be huge. It will be mixed as well. There'll be fans in both sections of the ground, all the way through the ground. Seville is going to be a lot of fun. Mm, it certainly will. Your misfortune, Sid, of missing the train. Our fortune means we could get you on the show. And there's the final again, April the 17th. Real Sociedad, Athletic Bilbao on ESPN+. Plus. Really should be uh, something very special indeed. Let's switch to Italy, the top of the Serie A standings. Lazio, uh, their win last week, putting them on top, two points ahead of Juventus. Inter, six point behind uh, the old lady. That Juve-Inter game will be played behind closed doors. We'll have it for you this Sunday, 3.45 Eastern start time on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, all the other games, all behind closed doors, all on ESPN+. Plus. Now, pretty amazing, but already less than 100 days, guys, to the beginning of Euro 2020. 90, How many? Yeah, no. 99 to be oh, precise. I already knew that. I know you counted. <laughs> uh, June the 12th, it all kicks off uh, in uh, Rome. ESPN and ABC uh, will uh, have full coverage of the tournament. We have a big breakdown, big article previewing 100 days till the start of the Euro 2020 tournament uh, on our website. Uh, go read it, ESPNFC.com. Reading the odds makers, interesting. Belgium and England are now joint favourites to win the Euros at 92. Both those two nations well ahead of France at 6 to 1. Netherlands 7 to 1. And Germany and Ooh. Spain together at 8 to 1. Uh, those odds make fascinating reading, don't they? Uh, Julian, what do you make of them uh, and what do you see happening this summer in the pan European tournament? The bookmakers, they work for me. It's good. <laughs> I don't want to be favourite. I don't want France to be favourite. I spoke to Paul Pogba the other day. He said, it's good when we outsiders, when we're the underdogs. We don't want to be favourites. So if people think that Belgium and England can win it and, and that France are only third or fourth or fifth favourite, I think that will, that will go with Deschamps and, and the players who, although they won the World Cup, will be very happy with not having too much pressure of being favourites or, or anything like this. I still think it's a very strong French team that will go to the Euros, uh, a team that is two more years experienced than at the, at the Russian World Cup, that has more maturity. If you look at someone like Kylian Mbappé, obviously, he's a much, much stronger player than he was two years ago. Uh, and if Paul Pogba gets back to full fitness, and so does Hugo Lloris, for example, then I think they will be a very, very competitive team. And Deschamps won't change his style. It will be the same pragmatic counter-attacking style, but they're very happy with the way he's been so far for them. Mm. Sitch, uh, the bookies say Belgium and England are the teams to beat, are they? Well, I, I imagine that, that the England uh, price is partly based on the fact, that, of course, that the semi-finals and the final will be at Wembley, that they'll mm. play three group games at Wembley. So it feels like there's a very, very significant advantage for them. I suppose the question might well be whether they can come through those two games they would have to play away from Wembley and get back into London in time mm. for, a, you know, ready for a semi-final or a final. Uh, I must admit, I look at the teams in this and, and this doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it was certainly born out of the last World Cup. I just think, I think that France have more good players than anyone else. I think they have a, a broader variety of really top-level players that other countries don't have. Spain, for example, of course, the team that, that I follow the most closely, at least professionally, I, I think Spain have, have significant flaws in the team. I think England have significant flaws in the team. And so, so I would personally have Belgium and France as the, as the top two. Mm. How about you, Stevie? Yeah, I'm with France, 100%. I don't, yeah. I don't get how, you know, Belgium... For what, nearly a decade, they've been everybody's favourite to get over the line. Mm. And the, the one guy who they, they rely on, Hazard, mm. probably ain't going to even be playing. Mm. So I'm not so sure why the bookies have got Belgium. Mm. I certainly I understand what Sid's saying about England playing at Wembley, but, but France... Mm. I, I don't I don't see how anybody is better than France. Look, I, I can understand Belgium. Belgium have been top of the world rankings for quite some time now. I felt um, it was in the striker department that let them down. I think Lukaku is starting to show better form, certainly, in, in that regard. Whether he's 
a clean enough finisher to see a, a, a team win a major international tournament. I guess this summer we, we'll find out. I think the, the issue with France is, is the same issues that they had in, in 2018. But you've got Olivier Giroud still not playing consistently and not scoring consistently. And, and uh, mm. you've got Antoine Griezmann who has regressed an awful lot in those two years. So as much as you may say that Mbappe has improved, um, Anton Griezmann is not mm. the player that he, he once was. Jules, uh, just finally on the Euros, we heard Stevie mention Eden Hazard. Uh, we know he had uh, ankle surgery recently in Dallas. Uh, what, what do you rate his chances of being fit for the tournament? So it should be a, a two-month uh, absence from now on. The, the, I was told the surgery went well today in, in the US and he will come back and do his re rehabilitation in, in Europe very soon. There's still a lot of hopes... Uh, Real Madrid, I think Sid will agree that maybe he might have a chance to even play a couple of games before the end of the season, for example. And certainly for Roberto Martinez in Belgium, there's a, a strong belief that he will be ready uh, for the Euros uh, and for June the 12th or whenever Belgium first game is later in that month. And even if he's not completely 100% at the start, fitness-wise, at the start of the, of the Euros... They would think that by the time you, you play the knockout games and the big games, the game that really matters, then he would be 100% and he would be firing again and carrying that team. They have a lot of talent to replace him, but with or without Eden Hazard makes obviously a big difference. He's tough. I think he's tough, but that's what the club expected, really. We knew that uh, the, uh, the discipline committee of the French Federation will, would hit him hard because it's not just even once that he pushes the referee. If you look at the footage again, is twice in the space of like 20 seconds and Jason Martins really lost his mind on that night away at Nîmes and now he's paying the price for it because six months from February the 6th, so obviously the season is over for him and he can play only, only next season, but it's a big blow for him, it's a big blow for Monaco, but again, even if he's tough and harsh, it's deserved because you just mm. can't push the referee like he did twice in the same game. Yeah, there aren't mentioned physically with the referee. Mm. You, you learn that as a kid. Mm. So the fact that this guy does it as a professional, mm. he deserves every month that he got. Well, the one thing you can't do in this studio is confront Shaka on his power rankings. Yeah. Uh, you want a bet? Which, which, which are, <laughs> Speaking which of six bet. months, uh -huh. it's been about six months since Liverpool have been off number one. Right. Or have, have been number one. But they're down That's after a terrible run of form. <laughs> Bayern Munich top. I'm not arguing. Right, good. I, no no I'm, argument with I'm, Bayern Munich. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're not. I'm giving Lazio lots of love. No, they deserve honest. it. They deserve they it. They deserve it. I know they played a game more than everybody else in Italy, but they got all kinds of love. Mm. And then the usual suspects. City, Dortmund in fantastic form. We see how five and six play out in the Champions League this week. Mm. Um, Real Madrid have dropped... Even though they beat Barcelona. Uh, see, you knew I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah, I knew I was going to say it. <laughs> Look, well, whatever happened to you're only as good as your last game? Mm. Well, because if you're only good as your last game, surely that would get Real Madrid no, back up you're that you're ranking. You're only as good as your last power rankings. And I've been away in Trinidad <laughs> for yeah. Carnival. They lost the City in the Champions League. So that's a no-no. You don't. Let's get Julian's assessment on this uh, rejuvenated power rankings. Jules, any quibbles? I mean, I'm sure the carnival has done uh, Shaka a lot of good, clearly, because for once there's a bit of sense in this power ranking Ooh, compared for to once, usual. Yeah. You know, I like it. <laughs> I'll I take like, that. like uh, Bayern Munich at top. I would have given a bit more love to Atalanta and pushed them a bit more. Yeah. Uh, but I agree with Stevie, though. Real Madrid winning the Classico and dropping four places. It's a bit harsh, no? Uh, well, you always say European Jews, football Jews more. almost talked himself into <laughs> invite to Trinidad Carnival, oh, oh, but no more. <laughs> that's that, that's, that's it. That's something we, we want to see. not invited anymore, yeah. Julian. <laughs> I, I enjoyed Hetafe's very brief stay in your uh, power rankings, by the way. You're, very, you're very, invited to uh, next very, carnival? Very brief. Jules just, said he, Jules just says he wasn't coming anyway. <laughs> 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 Thanks to Stevie and Shaka, to Jules and Sid. Extra time is coming next. And off we go down that twisty, turny path uh, known as uh, extra, extra time. time. Yeah. Oh, it's a twisty, turny oh, one. Oh, it's, it's like it's a mighty twist and turn today. Uh, Moritz gets us started for, uh, for Stevie. Uh, Igalo or Origi? Ooh. Simple choice. Ooh. One or the other. Origi. Yeah. No. Well, he's 100% fit. <laughs> Igalo's not 100% fit. He looked pretty good uh, Two today, nice goals against Derby. 
It was against Derby, but you did look Thank you. But it, was, <laughs> but it was two good finishes, though. Aye. Yeah. No, listen. I'm going to Gallo. Listen, you get him the ball five yards for goal, he'll mm. finish. I'm going to Gallo. Mm. Ask, him, ask him to run for you're it. Just, you're it, you're just you biased. See, you might right. see a different... You're just biased. <laughs> I'm going to Gallo. Another either-or from the bread devil, Shaka. Yeah. Who's the better goalkeeper right now, De Gea or Romero? With a little... <laughs> 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 Thought you might like that. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. To be fair, if there's a big game tomorrow, you you've got to take the hair. Yeah, you played the hair. Yeah, but yeah, but but he's making he's making there a lot, is a but. A lot yeah. more mistakes these I days. Know. Aren't I know. It's just that yeah. what? Jules, you want to weigh on 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 the goalkeeping question? De Gea or Romero? I'll go for Henderson. <laughs> is, is that possible? Can I, can I do that? Start some, glove, <laughs> yeah. some gloves on you, Henderson. You yeah. write in your own candidate? I guess you can. <laughs> you can just write in, write it in and bottle of your pallet sheet. That's allowed. Uh, David wants to bring Sid into the conversation. Uh, uh, what's the real story with Sarabia, asked David. I assume David means Edda Sarabia, the, uh, yeah. the number two at, at Barcelona. The, 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 the manager at the weekend, obviously, is, is Kike Setien in the Clasico, but Edda Sarabia is his number two, and the cameras caught him during the game, commenting the game to some of the people sitting alongside him, including the goalkeeping coach, including Kike Setien himself. Now, some of these were kind of technical comments, and some of them were comments of a man who was frustrated as chances were being missed and swearing and using quite colourful language. <laughs> and there's been a huge huge amount of focus on this over the last few days. Now, on one very basic level, I can't help but feel that this is a bit daft. This is basically a man doing his job. You know, the, the, the assistant coach is there to tell the manager some of the things that he's seeing that he's wrong, that he thinks might need, might need correcting. An assistant manager who cares about his team is going to lose his head a bit when a really good chance is missed, when the passes aren't the right ones, when the decisions being made are, are mistaken. That said, it is true that Kika Setien has said that, that the image, the, the kind of the impression that was given and the, the, if you like, the reputation of Barcelona may be slightly damaged by this and that Eda Sarabia will have to calm down a bit. It's not really in his nature, though. This is what Sarabia is. It's the way he, he lives football. And, and as I say, I fundamentally, at a basic level, can't see a huge amount wrong with it. Mm. David has got to be pleased. I don't know. He got the real story there. I, I wonder what if we had Cameron and Stevie Nicol on the sidelines. Oh. <laughs> How that would have all played out in the press... Right. See what? Yeah. Honestly, if they had stuck a camera on me for 90 minutes, <laughs> all my players would have thought I hated every single one of them. Because yes. I did. You know, you, <laughs> you, you talk about... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> they usually would do something, I'd talk to Paul and go, I told you. I told you he was going to do it. How many times have I told them? Uh, and then he'd come over to take a throw and I'd be like, that's a game. Well done. Go on. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's with, uh, with great pleasure, we welcome Hislop Sharkbake back to, the, uh, to, back to Extra Time. Been a while since uh, he sent in a question. Jules, I'm actually going to have you answer this first. Who should be England's number one? Right, uh, that's a big debate. I mean, I mentioned Henderson for United. I think he's having such a strong season that he deserves, yeah. for example, to be called up in March for the two games in, in March if they happen at the end of the month. And, and for then Southgate to have a look at him, a proper look at him with the goalkeeping coaches as well, and then decide. I still think that Jordan Pickford has a lot of flaws and we've seen that this season with Everton. I'm not sure about Pope either. I still think that this season hasn't been as good as the previous one. So I think Henderson has a good shout, but I could also see why he might choose that Southgate might choose Pickford for mm. his his past games with England already. Is, is Pickford automatic at this point, Shane? Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, and as opposed to, to go against the question as to who should be, who will be England's number one is Jordan Pickford. One because he's not done anything wrong uh, in an England shoot. I, I don't think he's lost Southgate's confidence. And secondly, and, and listen, I understand the criticism and the concern around Pickford, but. Um, a few years ago in, in leaving Sunderland, I thought there was even more cause for concern. Mm. And then you saw that you saw his performances at, at, at the World Cup. Um, I, I, as a result, I don't think you change. Not now. Mm. Mm. Stevie, uh, why did Liverpool get a pass on giving up on competition? I'm not sure that, that that's accurate, but others like Bayern, Passer or Juventus would get torched for it. Surely you need to aspire to as many trophies as possible to be amongst the best teams in history, I think. We certainly questioned well, I don't think Liverpool's they got a, approach. I don't we? think they got a pass. No. You know, we were we were talking on here how 
about all the criticism that, he, that, that Jurgen Klopp had mm. gotten about the FA Cup. So you, you can't say that they haven't been criticised. Mm. And at the end of the day, it's come down to a team. Listen, most teams are hoping to get a bit of silverware. Mm. Liverpool are in a position where they can pick what is more important mm. to win. Mm. And, that's, and that's where they're coming from. So I don't, I don't think that's correct to say that they didn't get any criticism at all. Mm. Paul Johnson, Chog, meanwhile, uh, good question. This: What's your biggest pet hate with the modern game? I'll give you mine just to get us going. Joint scarves. Oh, should be, should be Joint banned. Scarves. Yeah, no, with both teams that. on Come the same on. scarf. That is just, that is everything that's wrong with modern football for me. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what to top that. I really don't. I don't know whether I get more upset with players that fall over after the merest touch mm. or I get more annoyed at the pudding head officials that give free kicks for it. Mm. Somewhere in between the two. Mm. Mixture of both. Mixture of both. Yeah. I, I, you got I'm, any pet hates lurking in there, Shaggy? No, I'm, I'm... I've got I'm a lot, by the way. Go on, give us another one. Because <laughs> oh, I need no, one. No, give me one. Give me oh, one. No, I need one. millions of them. I need one. Oh. I don't have one. All this shaking hands and cuddling each other every two minutes. <laughs> right, it's your throw and well done. Hey, everybody's having a cuddle quite No on. cuddles allowed. Sid, uh, do, do you concur? I, I'm, I'm going to pick up actually on, on, on your complaint about half and half scarves. And this, oh. is a, this is something that a lot of people complain about. I must admit, I slightly buck the trend in this in that I don't have a big problem with half and half scarves really? as such. So, for example, for example, if you go to a really big game and it's a half and half scarf, let's say for argument's sake, we would, you know, we're talking about it in the show, the Copa del Rey final, Athletic Bilbao, Real Sociedad, that's a half and half scarf that I kind of think, yeah, I can see why that's a nice souvenir of this game. What yeah. I don't get, and this is where I completely agree with you, is the half and half scarf for every match. Yes. Right now, I, I, I don't, with the greatest of respect, and please forgive me, fans of these two teams, but I don't want a half and half scarf of Norwich against Sheffield United. You know, that is not, you know, that is not the game to be buying up. But you, you will see them sold for that game. And you think, because obviously, look, there are a lot of people who go to a game as a one-off. There are a lot of people who go as football tourists. And so if you turn up, you go, yeah, I want a half and half scarf for this game. But, you know, if it's, if it's Doncaster Rovers against Bristol City, forget mm. it. Jules, are you a... Uh... A bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't, ah, so totally doesn't right, matter who it? you support as long as they're a big club and you've got loads of dough. <laughs> no, 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 Steve, no, that's, that's, oh, that's exactly oh, the point. No, no, hang on, hang on. Oh, no, 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 you're right. I need to, uh, you, no, 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 I'm not at all. This is exactly the point. It's just saying it doesn't matter who you support. No, no, that's the whole point. If you support a team, you don't buy half and half scarf. You have the scarf of your team. Yeah. But if you're going to a game where maybe you don't support a team or it's an occasion or it's a one-off, then you do it. But as I say, I, uh, unless maybe, you know, as said, Doncaster against Bristol City, all right, if they get to a cup final, if they get to the ZDS or whatever these cup finals are called these days, right, then great. But if it's just a standard average game, that's where, I, that's yeah. where I'm not having it. I have to say, I retract my statement, Sydney. <laughs> You're 100% correct. Yeah. <laughs> Jules, uh, pet peeves in the modern game? Any, anything else? Yeah, I've got a few like like TV uh, swapping shot at halftime. It's the one I don't really don't really understand why you can't wait another 45 minutes to uh, to swap your shirt. If that's what you want. And the second one is people in the stands in the stadiums celebrating a goal when the linesman has had his flag up for the last 10 minutes and they're still celebrating like crazy when you you know clearly that the goal will be disallowed. Well, at least before VAR. Uh, always look at the linesman before celebrating, please. Mm. You're not harsh, right? I, I. <laughs> you are happy going. Like, you've got I'm no, like, yeah, no, I'm no like, all right, so all. Well, it's, I all, mean, it's all gravy. Yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> fun. It's all football. Okay, right, you're the music. Yeah. That's the other one, music. Oh, music, right? Yeah, so music you go is, to. Oh. You, right, now, obviously, a good selection of music, then great. Yeah. Right, but when you go into a ground, and I was very conscious of this, for example, in midweek at, at Real Madrid's game against Manchester City, but it's something that happens at all grounds, although Real Madrid do choose particularly bad music, I must mm. say, pre game. But you've got a big game. You want to have a comeback, right? So you get the fans in early, let them make the atmosphere. You don't mm. need to make the atmosphere for them. You don't need to put the music, let them sing the songs. But in fact, what happens is they can't. And then at half time, the music comes back on again. There's someone probably trying to score a goal from the halfway line on the, down on the pitch. Probably, by the way, sponsored by a betting company. <laughs> and, you know, just over and over again, this, it's like, look, 
let's actually let the fans play a part here. Let's not take agency away from the supporters, which of course is, I suppose, in a nutshell, one of the biggest problems of modern football is how much agency has been taken away from the mm. people that really matter. Tell you what, mm. me and Robbo, right? Me and Stuart were sat before the Champions League final in Madrid. Yeah. And what, three, four minutes before the kickoff, they've got a group on playing. And the two of us are sitting there, like, you know, the two old geezers in the mob that's going, what's this all, bro? We don't want to hear it. Get the ge Just start the game early. We want to no, no no see problem football. I have no problem with that either. Uh, everybody to, comes in to watch football. No, he's sitting and listening to, 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 to that end, the, the only thing I have an issue with is cheerleaders. And that's yeah. more an American thing. Uh, you don't see that out in Europe. Yeah. But outside yeah. of that, I'm like, ah, oh, let's. Actually, so we can have some fun. We got there in the end. There's something that bothers you. And it's chill. That's all. But you don't see that often. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Uh, well, there'll be no half and half scarves on tomorrow's show. We can promise you that. Or cheerleaders. Maybe, the, maybe there will be. Uh, ESPN FC available uh, every day on Plus.